Oh, Reza Marashi is the director of research at the National Iranian American Council. He joins us now from Washington. Thank you for being with us. Now, uh, relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia have been heading in the wrong direction for some time now. So was this inevitable? And what are the prospects of this escalating further? No, oh, conflict between two countries is never inevitable. Uh, and you're right to point out that relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia have ebbed and flowed over time. Uh, I think more recently, though, uh, things have taken a turn for the worse, unfortunately. And it certainly doesn't have to be that way. Uh, looking ahead, I think it's imperative that the two sides find a private, covert way uh, to de-escalate tensions and continue communication with one another, precisely because Saudi Arabia has made the decision to sever diplomatic ties. New ways of communication need to be implemented as soon as possible to prevent the conflict from spiraling further out of control and into areas that neither side would really want them to spiral into. Uh, you mentioned there about the fact that they've, uh, things have gotten uh, quite worse in, over the last uh, few days. The, the, we mentioned the execution of uh, uh, this um, uh, Shia cleric by the Saudi Arabian authorities and then um, the, the virtual ransacking of the uh, Saudi embassy in, in Tehran. I just want to focus on, on the Iranian side for a moment because there, are, there is criticism of Iran that they could have handled that uh, a lot better and that they could have properly protected the Saudi embassy as they are bound to do with any foreign embassy um, and, and they didn't do that. What do you say to that? I say that there's very few rules in international relations and foreign policy, but don't storm embassies is probably at the top of that list. So there's no question that the Iranian government did not fulfill its responsibilities to protect uh, foreign diplomatic presence uh, inside of Iran. And I think that the Iranian government has begun to take the proper steps of expressing regret for what happened and saying that they're going to hold the perpetrators accountable. Now it's the responsibility of the Iranian government to actually, A, follow through to make sure that justice is upheld in Iran, but also to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen again, because this isn't the first time that an embassy has been stormed in Iran, but it absolutely should be the last time. And of course, uh, from the from the Saudi side, all, all of this this latest spat began as a as a result of the execution um, of this uh, uh, Shia cleric uh, Nimr al Nimr. That's right, and and I think that the Saudis know exactly what they're doing. Uh, this has been a political prisoner inside of Iran, or excuse me, inside of Saudi Arabia. For quite some time now, but the decision to execute him, along with uh, 40 some odd other militants that weren't connected to him in any way, shape, or form, I think sends a very f powerful message not just to Iran, but also to the United States, which is essentially saying that we have diverging interests. We as Saudi Arabia have diverging interests from Iran and from the United States, and we're not afraid to take matters into our own hand. Now, that's a very dangerous escalation on the part of Saudi Arabia, and it further highlights that mistakes in Syria and Yemen grow worse, and it further highlights that problems cannot be solved unilaterally. Iran, America, Saudi Arabia, and a host of other actors all need to be at the same table chatting multilaterally and bilaterally, or the problem will get worse before it gets better. And, of course, this is bad news, isn't it, for uh, so many of the other, other people who are suffering uh, as a result of... of two of those uh, proxy wars that are going on in the region right now in Yemen uh, and Syria. Uh, of course, Saudi Arabia and Iran are heavily involved in, in both of those. What, what's that going to do for any attempts to, to try to uh, resolve those conflicts? Well, I don't think it bodes well, but it certainly doesn't have to guarantee failure on the part of the international community to find peaceful solutions to conflict. I'd put it to you this way. If the Saudis and the Iranians were offered a diplomatic venue away from public sight to try and resolve these issues or at least attempt to get on the same page, the Iranians would show up, and right now it doesn't look like the Saudis would. And frankly, that's been the problem uh, for the better part of two to two and a half years since President Rouhani came into office. Let's not forget, President Obama had to call the Saudi king and essentially beg him to allow Iran to enter talks regarding Syria. It shouldn't be that way, because durable solutions to any conflict requires the buy-in of every country with the capacity to wreck the solution. And that means that Iran and Saudi Arabia are both going to have to be there. I appreciate your perspective uh, on this. Uh, Reza Marashi joining us there from Washington. Thanks for being with us.